Are you excited? Because I'm excited this morning. As you know, family, we have been sojourning through our sermon series this month called Love Is. Love is. And you know that the first Sunday of this month, right, we looked at the fact that love is patient, right? And then the second Sunday of this month, we looked at the fact that love is kind. And then the third Sunday of this month, we looked at the fact that love always protects always protects, right? We explored the story of Jonathan, remember, protecting his friend David from an impending attack ordered up by Saul, right? And saw that love protects through warning, through covering, and through defending. And so today we are going to explore another layer. Did y'all know how many layers there are within love, right? We're going to explore yet another layer of the love of God by examining the fact that 1 Corinthians 13 and 7 says, love always trusts. Love always trusts. And so with that in mind, family, join me in the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, uh, starting right at the first verse. Again, that's the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, and I'll be starting at the first verse. It's a familiar story to some, it'll be new to others, but I'm excited that we get to look at what God wants to say about love, always trusting from this biblical story. And I'll be reading the new international version into your hearing. Hear the word of the Lord. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, he looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham told his two young servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I are going over there to worship, then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Uh, But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Uh, Just for a couple of moments this morning, family, 
as we continue to journey through our sermon series, Love Is, under the banner that love always trusts. We want to talk from this thought, trusting God when it doesn't make sense. Y'all ready this morning? Trusting God when it doesn't make sense. Father, we ask that you just embolden us and empower us in this moment to be able to open up and to be able to proclaim uh, the wisdom and the mystery and the revelation that is found within the width and the depth of your word. We thank you for another opportunity, God, for you to show us the, the expansiveness of the power of love. And so, Father, be with us in this time of preaching is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Trusting God when it doesn't make sense. Family trust is defined as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, character, ability, and or strength of something or someone. Let me say that again. Trust is defined as a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, the character, the ability, and or the strength of something or someone. Watch this, the word that is synonymous with trust is the word faith the word faith. So when 1 Corinthians 13 and 7 says that love always trusts, in essence, it's saying that love always believes. Love trusts and believes that you have my best interest at heart. Love trusts and believes that you will not harm me, but help me. Love trusts and believes that you won't leave me nor lessen me. But it's important to note that a love that hasn't been tested is a love that simply can't be trusted. So here it is uh, in the 22nd chapter of the book of beginnings where we see uh, that the Bible says, I'm in the text, verse one, God tested Abraham because a love that hasn't been tested is a love that can't be trusted. God tested Abraham family. There will be times in all of our lives uh, uh, where God will test our trust in him uh, and he will test us uh, by asking us to do something where the why uh, just simply doesn't make any sense. And the only thing uh, that will fuel you to obey that instruction uh, that doesn't make sense uh, or even to obey an instruction that you don't agree with, I don't have time today, uh, will be the unshakable trust uh, that you have in God. The Bible says God tested Abraham and this is how uh, God tested his trust in or if you will how God tested his belief in him. He said to Abraham, I'm in the text, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, uh, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there Woo! as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you now. You have to understand, family, just how large of a command this was, uh, uh, just how shocking of an instruction this was. Uh, as Isaac uh, was critical uh, to the lineage and the legacy of Abraham, Isaac uh, was the son of 
of promise. Uh, or was it not said that in Isaac uh, shall thy seed be called? Uh, uh, but what comes of that seed uh, if this pregnant bud uh, be broken off too soon? Isaac uh, was the son whom Abraham loved, and this unusual baffling instruction uh, was most certainly a trial of Abraham's love to God and therefore it must be something or someone that would be worthy of a true test of sacrifice when God tests you he tests you with what matters to you. I wish I had a church. When God tests you, uh, he's going to test you with the thing that matters the most to you. The Bible says that after being instructed uh, uh, to sacrifice his son, uh, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. Do you guys see when I read the text that there there was no hesitation uh, uh, in Abraham's obedience to the instruction. But the Bible says after he got the instruction from his God, uh, early the next morning, Abraham began to load up his stuff. The Bible says he took him, uh, two of his servants, and his promised son, the son that all the generations were going to come through. Uh, uh, when he had cut enough wood, uh, the Bible says that he placed it on his son. And on the third day, he looked up and saw the place and the distance. Abraham told his two young servants, watch this. You're going to see it. Stay here with the donkey. Now, family, he got the instruction from God. For those that don't know the story, I want you to sacrifice your son, your promise, the thing I promised to you. I want you to sacrifice the thing that your future is in. Uh, and the next morning, Abraham gets up to begin to obey the instruction that he does not understand and does not make any sense. And he begins to travel for three days with two servants and his son, Isaac. And listen, family, this is what he says once he gets to where God had bestowed showed him he would begin to go up. He says, stay here with the donkey. He's talking to his two young servants. He says, the boy and I, talking about him and Isaac, are going over there to worship. Hold on. I don't have time this morning. You're going to, to worship. S worship requires sacrifice. Ah, you don't, it's a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice of worship. And so uh, Abraham teaches us uh, that we're supposed to view every single uh, sacrifice unto God uh, as a worship. And so Abraham says, me and my son are going over here to worship. Then we'll come back to you. I don't know why God is telling me to do this, but I'm going to follow find a way to obey because you don't need to understand it to obey because the truth is understanding is not a prerequisite for obedience somebody needs to catch that this morning because you tend to only obey what you understand I feel feel a tug in my spirit through here. You tend to only obey what is totally and fully mapped out for you. You, you tend to only obey uh, when it is that someone has given you the entirety of the plan. Uh, but the truth is understanding uh, is not a prerequisite for obedience. And even though uh, the instruction appeared to make no sense, we see that that Abraham had enough trust in God uh, to say to the ones at the bottom of the mountain uh, that watch this, me and my son are going to worship, but we'll be back. Now, hold on. We got a problem because we'll, it means we will, and we 
means both of us plural. How in the world, Abraham, are you going to go sacrifice your son uh, and then declare to your servants uh, that you and your son will be back? It's in this phrase, we'll be back, uh, uh, that we see the with of Abraham's trust in God. Uh, it's in the will be back uh, uh, that we see the depth uh, of Abraham's belief in his God. He knew uh, what God told him to do uh, and he set out to obey uh, what God told him to do, uh, but he trusted uh, that God loved him uh, and loved Isaac, uh, that he didn't know what was going to happen going up the mountain, uh, and he didn't know what was going to happen at the top of the mountain, uh, but what he knew is that he had a promise from God, uh, and that whatever happened, him and the promise would be back. Uh, now, that's true trust. It's not trust until it looks shaky. Uh -huh. uh, it's not trust until you can't see your way clear. Uh, and the Bible says that Abraham took the wood uh, for the burnt offering, again, placed it on his son Isaac. Now, I believe uh, he obliged Isaac to carry the wood, uh, both to try his obedience in a smaller matter uh, and that he might also be a type and shadow of Christ uh, who would carry his own cross as the ultimate sacrifice. And as they were on their journey, uh, Isaac spoke up finally, fam, uh, and said, if it were me, fam, I would have spoke up immediately. I just want everybody to be clear. A if it were me, before we started out the, th the first three days with the servants, I would have been asking questions. How about you? But Isaac, he kept it together, family, all the way till verse 7. And eventually, this is what Isaac said. You see it. He said, Father, he said, hold, hold on, hold on a minute. Abraham said, yes, my son, uh, the fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? See, Abraham wasn't the only one in a space of trusting. Uh -huh. Abraham had to trust God before he started up the mountain, uh, while Isaac really had to trust Abraham to continue up the mountain. Abraham uh, was trusting his heavenly father, uh, while Isaac uh, was trusting his natural father. Uh, and that's because the truth is uh, you can't follow uh, someone that you don't trust. Uh, that's why the enemy uh, is always after the breakdown of trust in our relationships uh, because he knows that if trust is broken, uh, the willingness to follow will equally be broken. You have to understand, family, trust is a staple of the foundation of love. If you are always suspicious and uh, uncertain uh, of the one giving you an instruction uh, or suspicious uh, and uncertain uh, of the motive behind the one asking something of you, uh, then genuine love is lacking uh, because love thrives in an environment of trust, uh, but it shrivels up uh, in a spirit of distrust. Uh, it is very difficult uh, to love without trust, uh, for trust uh, is a lubricant for love, uh, and without it, forward movement is difficult, if not impossible. Isaac uh, uh, saw everything uh, uh, that was needed for the act of sacrifice. Uh, except the actual sacrifice. Uh, but Abraham's answer uh, is the second testimonial to his trust in God uh, and that he responded to Isaac by saying, watch this, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Now I'm confused yet again. 
the original instruction was that Isaac was to be the lamb for the sacrifice. The original instruction was to kill Isaac. But even though that was the original instruction, Abraham told his two servants, stay here. The boy and I are going to worship and we'll be back. And now a second layer of trust. Abraham is saying that God is going to provide the sacrifice. Abraham held to his trust in the fact that in spite of this current instruction, God said Isaac was the son of promise. I know what God is asking me to do, but I know what he said. I don't have time this morning. I'm trying to help you uh, for when you're tested. Uh, I'm trying to help you because he's going to test you with what matters most to you. I'm trying to help you. Uh, that Abraham said, I know what you told me to do, uh, but I know what you promised me. Uh, and you have to hold on to what he's telling you to do uh, and hold on to the promise uh, at the same time. Uh, God said, Isaac is my son of promise. Uh, so I'm going to walk out the instruction. Uh, I'm being obedient to the instruction uh, while simultaneously believing and trusting that God's got to be up to something. When you find yourself in a season of testing uh, and you know that you have a promise from God, uh, you have to hold on uh, and you have to say, God must be up to something uh, because I know what he promised me. Uh, I know what he told me. Uh, I know what he showed me. Uh, I'm going to follow this instruction. It doesn't make any sense uh, but I know that he has to be up to something uh, and what he's up to it's got to be a miracle and you and I have to guard against translating that which we don't understand as something sent to hurt us because that's what many of you do if you don't understand it you assume that it's meant to hurt uh, because it's hard to obey what you think is hurting you. Uh, but the Bible says uh, his ways are not our ways. The Bible says uh, that his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so you cannot, uh, with your finite mind, uh, begin to try to understand uh, what an infinite God is doing. But what you must do is find a way to obey. And Abraham understood this, which is why he answered God himself will provide. The truth is the experiences and instructions that you don't understand aren't meant to hurt you. They're meant to fortify you. They're meant to get a God himself will provide stirring up in your spirit. Uh, in this season, uh, your trust in God, I'm about to prophesy, uh, has to be so resolute uh, that your confession uh, to your lack of understanding of why uh, is God himself will provide. How are you going to pay your rent? God himself will provide. How are you going Going to get that job God uh, himself will provide how are you going to get enough clients God uh, himself will provide how are you going to get the financing God himself will provide the story goes uh, I feel a like God himself will provide in my spirit uh, even right now uh, 
uh, you've been looking for man to do it uh, but God has shut man down uh, because he's trying to show you uh, that he himself will provide uh, he's trying to prove to you uh, that he himself will provide uh, he's trying to test your trust in him uh, that no matter what it looks like uh, God is able to provide the story goes that Abraham and Isaac continue on together trusting and trembling <laughs> trembling and trusting uh, and when they reached the place uh, uh, God told him about uh, Abraham uh, built an altar uh, and he arranged the wood on it uh, and the Bible says verse 9 uh, he found his son uh, and laid him on the altar uh, on top of the wood he trusted God right up to this very moment after what was many a weary step and with a heavy heart he arrives at the fatal place Isaac now knowing that he was considered up as the lamb which his father previously said God would provide I don't have time this morning it appears that Isaac is just as trusting as Abraham for we don't find that he raised any objection against it that he petitioned for his life we don't see it in the text that he attempted to make an escape we don't see it in the text uh, or much less that he struggled uh, with his aged father uh, but because he trusted his daddy uh, he laid uh, on that altar uh, in one of the most climactic uh, biblical scenes uh, within our holy canon uh, and then the bible says uh, that abraham reached out his hand uh, and took the knife uh, to slay his son do you trust god's love enough to slay what he says is your promise Do you trust God enough to be willing to slay what he says is your promise? Do you trust enough believing that if he asks you to kill it, he can turn around and resurrect it? Are you willing uh, to release that which you love? Uh, not knowing that God is simply testing you to make sure that you don't love it more than you love the God that gave it. Oh, but the Bible says, but the angel of the Lord <laughs> called out to him from heaven right before Abraham was about to sacrifice his only son. And the angel said, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. The angel said, don't lay a hand on the boy. Don't do anything to him. The Bible says Abraham looked up, family, and there in a thicket, the Bible says he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his promise. Notice the parallel uh, between the ram offered on the altar as a substitute for Isaac uh, and Christ uh, offered on the cross as a substitute for us, whereas God stopped Abraham Abraham from sacrificing his son. God did not spare his own son Jesus from dying as a substitute for us. Some believe that as Abraham was trusting God, walking up one side of the mountain, uh, that the ram was walking up 
the other side of the mountain. And that's because as you're walking in obedience, God is orchestrating the position of your provision. Let me say it again. As you're walking in obedience, God is orchestrating the position of your provision. Just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean it's not moving into view. The text closes by saying, verse 14, do I need... The text closes by saying, verse 14, uh, so Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Love always trusts. And God took us uh, through a season in 2020 uh, of stripping us of all of the man-made things that we had put so much trust in. uh, over our trust in God uh, so that the only thing we have left uh, uh, to trust is God. And over the course uh, of the next nine years, uh, if you trust God, uh, if you believe God, uh, every year starting with 2021, God is going to provide. The Bible says, I'm done in The book of Psalm, the 20th chapter and the seventh verse, some trust in chariots and uh, some uh, in horses, but we uh, will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Love trust that God is exactly who he says he is. And in our text, Abraham trusted in the name of the Lord. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides on the mountain. The Lord provided. You need to trust that God is who God says he is. And a lot of times when we've experienced letdowns by people, we project that distrust onto God. But God's love is a love that you can trust. And no matter what it looks like or what he requires you to do, You can obey God knowing that you can trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. No matter what it is that God instructs you to do that seems odd. You have to believe that he is who he says he is, that he is not a man that he should lie. And so if God said it, that settles it. And so you need a will be back in your spirit. Uh, You need a God himself will provide in your spirit. And know that there are times when God will test you just simply to make sure that you don't love what he has given unto you more than you love him. Love always trusts. And so let me pray for you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you have tested some of us this year we thank you God because you gave some of us instructions this year and God we did not understand why you were asking us what you were asking of us father and it made us question uh, whether or not what you said about the promise was so. But we thank you for this biblical story that comes as a reminder that there are times where you will test our love for you uh, and that if we simply obey your instruction, 
that you will come to find that our belief in you is sure and that we will be able to testify that God himself is a provider we thank you for the way that you strengthen our faith and mold our faith and grow our faith and we thank you uh, this morning that as we move into uh, the beginning of this new decade that there's going to be times and seasons uh, where all we have will be our trust in you uh, but we declare today that our our trust will be enough. Why? I know that God loves me. And because he loves me, I can trust him because love always trusts. And so God, we thank you today. Thank you for being a God that we can trust. As we begin to close out this year, with COVID cases on the rise, with there still being a sense of uncertainty, yet we are certain in the fact that we can trust the God that has already been in our tomorrows. And so we give you praise for strengthening us this last Sunday of November and fortifying us for our futures. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody just type amen. So family, listen, we are looking forward to seeing all of our partners on this upcoming Tuesday. Uh, we want you to get excited and to be in expectation of our time together again on this upcoming Tuesday. And so family, Pastor Chris is coming at this time and he's going to give you a final benediction and greeting. We love you. We are praying for you and True City Partners. We look forward to seeing you on Tuesday night. God bless you.